All right, thanks for watching. And in today's quick video, I just want to define the concept of an upper bound and a lower bound because those will be crucial when we'll talk about soup and inf next time. So, definition, uh, again, let S be a non-empty subset of R. R, then um, we say S is bounded above by M, so some finite number M, or similarly M is an upper bound for S if and only if, uh, no matter which element in S you pick, S is less than or equal to M for all S in S. So here's a good example of a set that's bounded above. It looks like this. Think of a half infinite interval. What bounded above means is just has a ceiling. So in other words, there's some number M such that no matter which element in S you pick, you guarantee that that element is less than or equal to M. And all the elements are less than or equal to M. And similarly, we say S is bounded below below by some number greater than minus infinity, or similarly, uh, or equivalently, m is a lower bound for s. If s is greater or equal to minus m, sorry, if s is greater or equal to m for all s. So think of uh, uh, the lower bound as being a, a floor to your interval or to your set. So here's again another example. So you have, uh, this is little m, and this is your set s. And what we're saying is no matter which number you pick in s, it's guaranteed to be a greater or equal to m. And lastly, we just say S is bounded if both things are true. If uh, S is bounded above and below. In other words, it's kind of, uh, how can I say, it's bounded. That's the best way of saying it. It's kind of finite on both sides. This is capital M, and this is little m. So it has, it has a bottom and a top in some sense. All right, and just a couple of quick examples. Let's take, for instance, the interval minus infinity comma three, which again looks kind of like the uh, first picture. So this is three and it just goes on to minus infinity that way. Then uh, S is bounded above by three. m equals 3, simply because if you take any random element is s, it's guaranteed to be less than or equal to 3, but it's not bounded below. In other words, there's no number such that every element of s is greater or equal to that number. Uh, that wouldn't work, because otherwise it's not minus infinite. 
in one side. Or another example, we have s to be the natural numbers. Again, one, two, three. Dot, dot, dot. Then, well, notice s is bounded below by m equals one. Because again, every natural number is greater than or equal to one. By one, but it is not bounded above. There does not exist a biggest, if you want, a natural number. And more interestingly, let's study the next example. And again, this will lead to the definition of soup, which again is the most important concept, in my opinion, of analysis. Take the interval s to be 0, 4. But let's not include the number 4. So this is 0, and this is 4, and this is s. Let's see. Then, of course, s is bounded below by 0. So s is bounded below. by m equals 0. Again, because if you take any element in your set, s, if you take any element s in s, then s is guaranteed to be greater or equal to 0. But interestingly, even though 4 is not in your set, it is still true that 4 is an upper bound. But also, S is bounded above by m equals 4. Again, why? Because if you take any element in your set, it's guaranteed to be less than or equal to 4. So for all s, s and s, S indeed is guaranteed to be less than or equal to 4. And that is very important and very interesting. In other words, your upper bound does not have to be in your set. Okay. M doesn't have to be in your set. Unlike the maximum, remember in the previous video, I told you the maximum doesn't have to be in your set. But, uh, no, I'm sorry, um, very important. Unlike the maximum, in other words, the maximum has to be in your set. But the upper bound does not have to be in your set. That's what makes it great. And in fact, let's study this even more because this actually tells us a lot of things. So note, Question, is the upper bound unique? Is there just one upper bound from your set? Actually, no. So note, uh, m equals 4 is an upper bound. For s. So again, let me draw this picture again. So this is 0 and this is 4. And we found that 4 is an upper bound for s. But there are actually many other upper bounds because you could also take five or six or let's say seven and a half. But also five, six, seven and a half are upper bounds. For s. Because why is that true? It is still true, strictly speaking, that if you take any element in s, it's less than or equal to 7.5. In other words, if you take any number greater or equal to 4, it's still an upper bound. 
But of course, this raises the question, then what makes four so special? Well, what makes four so special is that among all the upper bounds, four is the smallest upper bound. In other words, four is what's called the least upper bound, and that's precisely what a supremum is. And that will be the point of next video. All right, thanks for watching.